then I then I had had lunch, and uh, then I had had people trying to trying to talk my leg off after lunch Sunday. I mean, just a rap, rant, rambling, rattling, rattling. I couldn't get a word in edgewise. I mean, believe that one. Nobody. Okay. No. no so, uh, all right. So, uh, th this uh, next uh, Monday, Tuesday, and Wednesday will be uh, the Mount Abraham Mission Conference or Evangelistic Association Conference, and we're going we're going to be uh, going there, and we've got a few folks that want to go, and so if you can work that out, well, we'll be glad to have you ha have you there, and we're going to ask God to bless and take care in a mighty and special way. And uh, then uh, on the 14th, it's not actually the 14th, it's uh, Tuesday. What when is the 14th? 14th, I think, it's on like Sunday, Monday, uh, Tuesday, Monday, February. February. It's, a it's a Sunday. Okay, so the the, the uh, Johnson are, are going to be here on Wednesday night before the 14th. Now, if they don't have some place to go, well, they may stay with us on, on February the 14th. So we'll just ask God to bless and take care in a mighty and special way there. Now, and uh, they're, they're our missionaries. We've supported them ever since they've been on the field, I believe, in uh, in uh, Mexico. And so, so we've supported them a long time. And I think they started like three churches and uh, all. And so we need to ask God to bless and take care of that. Then on March the 11th, which is a Thursday, at 7 o'clock, we'll be having the Warren family with us. And so God's going to bless there. And uh, we're going to have a great time that. And then... On on uh, the next thing I've got booked is Father's Day, and uh, I've got Sean Druitt is going to be here on Father's Day, and uh, going to be here Sunday morning on Father's Day. So we'll look forward to that and ask God to bless and uh, take care uh, in that. So y'all might want to mark that one down on your on your calendar also. And uh, then I have a missionary, the Millers, brother Miller. He had like six kids going to Mexico. Lives over at Decatur. Uh, yeah, no, yeah, Decatur. Ader from Decatur, yeah, and uh, and all that. So, uh, so he called me to call me to call me yesterday, and I told him to give me a call right back. I had to answer the phone and uh, everything, and I and I so I got that got to take care of that, and then he never did call back. And then he called me back today, and he called me as I was walking in to eat lunch and uh, all. And so, uh, so he said, he said, let me call you back. I said, best time to catch me is about 10, 11 o'clock at night. I said, if you call me about 10, 11 o'clock at night, you'll, we, we can really talk and all. So, so anyway, uh, we need to ask the Lord to bless and take care and all these things that we've got going uh, for this year. Let's ask God to supply the need uh, in a mighty and special way. Let's pray for uh, our missionaries, pray for all missionaries and all people around the world that's spreading the gospel of the Lord Jesus Christ. Let's, let's ask God to bless. I talked to, uh, I have a friend of mine, Joe Walton, his wife, uh, she passed away at the same time Vic, Miss Vicky did, and they had her funeral the next Saturday or Sunday, I think it was Sunday afternoon. Uh, they had her funeral uh, 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 then, and he and I went out to lunch together today. And Joe and I grew up together. He, I lived on this end of Davenport. He lived down on that side of Davenport, and uh, all. And his his daddy was a bricklayer, and uh, all. And Joe uh, Joe uh, raised up. Kind of like all the rest of us about that time, we was pretty, uh, pretty rowdy, you know. And uh, but but we were good. We love we we were having fun while we were being rowdy. We weren't being mean rowdy. We were just having fun as we were going rowdy. And uh, and my dad said, I don't care whether you're having fun or you're not having fun. You ain't gonna like like that. So you better settle down. I said, Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. You know. But us us remember our missionaries. Ask God to bless. I think we called. Uh, the first set Sunday, so we'll call the second set tonight. In Mexico, we have the Cokers, the Johnsons, Pattersons, uh, Mike Patterson, Nathan Patterson, Evelyn Patterson, Garcia, uh, the Sloans, and we need to put the Millers on there uh, and ask God to bless and take care of there. And uh, they're in Me uh, they're in uh, and uh, they're in Mexico. They're they're trying to get get to the field of Mexico. And then let's pray for missionary these in missionary training. That's Brother Smith. I've known Brother Smith a year, long, long time, and uh, all. And then Mission Relief Rogers uh, in Mongolia. We have Bill Patterson. Uh, they're translating the Bible into Mongolia. So let's pray for them. Ask God to bless and take care of there. And uh, then let's pray for 
uh, those in evangelism, the music evangelism, the Flanagan's, Brother Flanagan, I forgot how many thousands of songs he has written, but it's a lot. And so, so he, he, they've been faithful. They started serving God about the time I, I started serving God and they, they have been faithful and God has blessed them uh, with great music. And so we need to ask God to bless, take care of their Ortiz in Nepal uh, in New York. We have the, uh, to the Jews, we have the Gibsons, uh, Kennedys in Nicaragua, God's time in Nigeria and uh, uh, the Warrens in North Africa, the Rose in Papua New Guinea in the Philippines. We have the Byers, the Canes, the Lozano, Vera Ferrete. Uh, we have in the printing ministry, the Duns and the Hulsies. We have in Romania, the Nispels in v Vladimir uh, in Siberia, uh, Mays and Fredericks in Thailand, Bryant in Uganda, uh, Charlins in the United States and Pierce in the military, uh, uh, Steve Stevens in Zambia and Kathy Brown. And uh, ask God to bless and take care. And help us, ask God to help us to help others that are trying to serve the Lord. Trying to serve the Lord. That's that's what we're supposed to do. And uh, then that's how we get the gospel out. Now, let's pray for this nation. Let's pray for the peace of America and pray for the peace of Jerusalem also. And uh, then let's pray uh, for this nation. And uh, I don't know what it's going to take to get us back to God. And uh, we've, got, we've got people that are getting more and more power all the time that they're anti-God and they're anti anything traditional American. Mm -hmm. And, uh, and that, that's what communists do. Okay. That's what communists do. That's what the Muslims do when they take over a nation, they go in and start destroying the history of the nation. Now, if you watch news very much, you'll see them when they go into these countries over there, You'll see them. They'll show them. They're they're tearing down the monuments that the, that culture has, and they want to destroy the culture. Typical, and the way it works with communist, ungodly people, Amen. and uh, anti God people, and anti people that are contrary to them. And so, so you just you just hold on uh, for your little tin bippy, because we're going to see some real things that are not going to be very good and right. all. And so, so let's pray and ask God to bless. And, and I'll, I don't want to be political. I'm being moral. I'm being spiritual. We are losing it. We've got these people. They claim God on one side and they do what the Satan wants on the other side. That's right. So you tell me what they are. And all. God says by their fruits, you shall know them. Amen. Okay. So what people say and what people do outlives what they say. And so we need to ask God to bless and take care then. And what's so bad about it now, this time to go around, we had people saying what they were going to do. People still voted for them. Yeah. That's how, that's how far away from God we have gotten. Yeah. You know? And I'm not, I'm, I'm not here about that, but if y'all want to see my illegitimate president shirt, you're welcome, welcome to look at, it. I will put it on and y'all can all take a picture with me, my illegitimate president. Sure. And I only charge 50 cents a photo. That's cheap. Good yeah, yeah. <laughs> Look at the person that's in the movie. All right, cheaper by the dozen. Now, let's pray for our pastor if we had one. And all, and let's ask God to bless and take care. Let's pray for the needs of the church. Pray for our insurance. Asking God to bless and take care of that. Let's pray uh, for those that serve in the church. Let's pray uh, for those uh, that. Uh, work and pray and visit and uh, maintain all everything. Uh, musicians, let's, let's thank God for that and asking God to bless and take care. Let's pray for our military personnel. Uh, Krista Gomez, Adam Salazar, Adam Olson, Eric and Robin Katz, Blue McMahon, Thomas Boland, Daniel Medina, Christian Ponchicano, Chad Hammock, Isaac, Isaiah, Aaron Cedillo, Kevin Letts, Chase Clinton, Benjamin Vanderpool, Ty Bridges, Christian Cedillo, and all of our military and our veterans. Let's pray for these that are lost and all lost people, let's pray that God will touch their heart. They'll be gloriously saved. Let's pray for, let's pray for uh, Pat Fur, uh, the passing of uh, Char uh, Charles Fur last week. We had his funeral a week ago today. Uh, let's pray, uh, let's pray for uh, Joy and Sarah and Allison and Becky Patterson. Let's pray for uh, uh, the COVID victims. Ms. Nina is home, and I, they said they won't know until Monday, but she has COVID. 
and I was tested for COVID yesterday and I'm negative still and uh, all. And you said, well, that your preaching is negative too, but that's beside the point. Where, okay, uh, so so uh, uh, let's pray for Mike McBride and uh, all. And they, they tried to check his heart out and they found out there wasn't one there. Amen. You know, so, you know, so, but it's hard. And so let's pray, pray for him. Ask the Lord bless. Let's pray for uh, Mary Melton, uh, Mitchell's Jane, Janey, uh, Neil's uh, Toby family, uh, Virginia, Edward McClintock, uh, and y'all pray for Nina. Uh, Edward is sick. He doesn't have COVID, uh, but he he's sick. So let's pray and ask the Lord to bless and take care. And, and uh, uh, now, uh, you ladies, uh, I appreciate ladies. Amen. And, uh, all, and uh, ladies really take a hard, they do a, they work hard and uh, all. Uh, and my mother was a lady and all. And uh, sometimes we didn't think she was when she was working us over a little bit, but man, you know, and uh, all, but you know, uh, I appreciate, I appreciate the ladies that serve and, and, uh, and I appreciate all you ladies that take care of us crazy husbands. I'm I'm putting butter on my bread now, ladies. I'm I, you know, I, I buttered it Sunday. Y'all, how many heard the message Sunday? Did I not butter it up for the ladies? Okay, I buttered it. So I'm expecting, I'm expecting a little something, and all, and so, you know, I'm expecting something, and it's not a baby. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, but remind them of that, Nathan. Remind them what I was expecting. Well, I appreciate that, Nathan. At, le at least you're willing. I won't talk about those that are not willing. <laughs> All right. So let's ask God to bless and take care. And let's pray. Let's pray for those that have cancer. Uh, those are on hospice and uh, those that have Alzheimer's. Let's pray for uh, Laura Howard. Uh, did they put Shirley in the rest home? Yes. Uh, to, to okay. And she's in the Jayton group. Jayton. Yes. Okay. Let's pray for her and ask God to bless and take care. And uh, then uh, let's, pray, let's pray for these families that have lost one, loved ones. Uh, Y'all pray especially for uh, Joe Walton. Uh, He's really having a real tough time of it and uh, all uh, I'm having a tough time of it, but it's affected his health and uh, everything. And he can't, he's just having a tough time. And so, so y'all pray for him. I tried to be a help and a blessing today. We cried, to, cried a little bit together. And, uh, well, I cried. He, he hurts it so bad that it can't, can't and uh, all. And so us pray and ask the Lord to bless and ask the Lord to take care in a mighty and special way, you know. And so, so us, us had to ask the Lord to, to supply the need, okay? And yes, Brother David. I have a friend in Lubbock that uh, is going through some hard times too. That say Chet in Lubbock, his son's got brain cancer. Ah, uh, okay. This will be the second son that he's lost. To brain cancer? Uh, no. Oh, okay. Well, let's pray. Let's pray for them. And I ask God bless. I was, I was afraid they might have something genetic there. All right. Yes, Miss. Uh, I know that uh, Jimmy and Helen are already on the list, but Jimmy's mom is having a problem. Okay. 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 So, that that will do him in. And so let's pray and ask the Lord to bless and take care and supply the need in a mighty and special way. Anybody else? Yeah. Yes. Walter King. Walter King. King. K E E N. Oh, Keen. Keen. Okay. Walter King. Let's play for Walter Clint King. Anybody else? Unspoken prayer request. Ask God to bless and ask God to take care in a mighty and special way. And we're going to ask Brother David if he would to ask God to bless in these prayer requests. Hey, you'd rather me get Brother Mike right now? Okay. Go ahead, Brother David. Dear Father, God will be that name. Thank you for your many, many blessings. Thank you for our church. Thank you for this day. Thank you for 
took all these people in our lives. Thank you for using the hard times for good for your people. We pray that you continue to do that. We pray that you continue to attend to our prayer list as you so faithfully have. These people are going through the hardest times in their lives. And we can't do any more for them. We look to you for your peace, your wisdom, your healing as you see fit. Trust in your perfect will. And we ask that all these things be done in your son Jesus Christ. Holy and blessed name. Amen. 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 Oh, if you if you want a CD of Miss Nikki singing, Brother Bob has some back here. And uh, all and there's there's four of them. And so I I'm getting ready to start listening. And, uh, all of it. and so, so uh, uh, do you have some extra thumb drive? Yes, sir. Okay, he has some thumb drives if you really have a thumb drive. Oh, okay. And so, um, you, might, you might give him a, you might give Miss Quinta some money because she used her money to buy that stuff. <laughs> so give him money. <laughs> What's up, son? <laughs> Amen. Well, let's take our handles. Let's turn to page 12. The old rugged cross. <laughs>
Amen. All right, preacher, come preach. Yeah, we appreciate that. It's good to be in the Lord's house. We're glad that you're here tonight. It's good to have all of you back, man. We uh, Sunday was Sunday was a rough day, but you know what? Uh, God blessed uh, in a mighty and special way, and uh, took care. And uh, we're glad that you're here tonight. And I, if you, I hope a lot of you watched this on Facebook, but uh, I want y'all to know we're the one of the few churches having church in town tonight. I don't know how many others are having, but. Uh, but uh, we're one of the few ones, and uh, we've uh, we only quit quit one service, I think, during all this, and and all, and I don't I don't think it was for it it was cause of rain. It wasn't because of uh, COVID, but uh, uh, had, we thought we was going to have storms and and uh, all. But we're finishing up in the book of Romans uh, tonight, and uh, then we're going to go into the book of Acts now. I want you to remember about the book of Acts. It's called the Acts of the Apostles. And when I was in college, they said if the apostles had not acted, they would not be any Acts of the Apostles. And so it, there has to be some action. Okay. So I want you to think about that when we when we get into uh, into that. It took people acting upon what they said they believed. And so that's that's the way it's going to have to be. You have to act upon uh, what uh, you say uh, you believe. Now, if you don't act, you're probably not acting on what you say you believe. But you're showing what you believe by because you don't act and uh, all. And so so it takes uh, it takes action uh, to do what God wants us to do. Now uh, we're going into I think it's verse number twenty one, if I'm not mistaken. Pretty close. All right. Let's stand for the reading of the word of God. Romans chapter 16, uh, verse number 21. He says, Timotheus, my work fellow, and Lu Lu Lucius, and Jason, and Sosa uh, Planner, uh, Sosa Planner, my kinsman, salute you. I, Tert Tertius, Tert Tertius, huh? Tertius. Tertius. Appreciate that, Nathan. Uh, who wrote this epistle? Salute you in the Lord. Gaius, mine host, and of the whole church, saluteth you. Erastus, the chamberlain of the, uh, of the city, saluteth you. And Quartus, a brother, the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ be with you all. Amen. The second time he used amen. And th then now to him that is of power to establish you according to my gospel and the preaching of Jesus Christ according to the revelation of the mystery, which was kept secret since the world began, but now is made manifest by the scriptures of the prophets according to the commandment of the everlasting God made known to all nations for the obedience uh, of faith. Those are two great verses. To God only wise be glory through Jesus Christ forever a third. Amen. Father, we thank you, God, for this day. We thank you, God, for these that have come. I pray, God, that you'll bless and take care tonight. Speak to hearts and lives and God, we live in a day, God, that we're going to have to have your help. We're going to have to have you to guide us into all truth and knowledge and wisdom and understanding. And God, we've got people, God, tonight that they have power, that they're abusing. And I'm asking you, God, to touch their heart. And God, let them be gloriously saved. And God, let them realize, Father, uh, what they're doing. And I pray and I'm asking you, God, uh, to please bless and please take care. God, we need you. God, we're in desperate straits. And God, we need your help. And I pray, Father God, tonight that you will bless and take care. For it's in Christ's name we do pray and ask it. Amen. Now, as we look in these verses of Scripture, how many knows who Timotheus is? Timothy. That's who Timotheus is. He went by the name Timotheus and went by the name of Timothy. He said he was my work fellow. He was my co-worker in the faith. Paul was, Paul was the spiritual father of Timothy. And Paul here is talking about him being his co-worker, work fellow. Somebody that worked uh, in uh, as, as a fellow worker. Then we have Lucius, which is Luke, and he is the physician. And you'll read about him in the first uh, first. Uh, 
uh, chapter of the book of Acts. And Luke went with Paul because uh, a lot of people think and believe that Paul did have a lot of physical ailments because of being beaten and stoned and, uh, and being, uh, being mistreated uh, so many times. And, and Paul uh, had, a, had a lot of health issue. And today, that, I think that's what Luke, Luke did. But uh, even with that, the most important thing uh, Luke did is he wrote the book of Acts. And today, that, that, that means a lot. You say, boy, it means it more than that. Yes, they gave their life. They gave their whole being, their purpose for being to one thing, and that was putting out the gospel of the Lord Jesus Christ. Right. Now, we have had powder puff Christianity for a long time. Yeah. And now we are under assault by ungodly forces that we've let turn loose in this nation. And because we turned our back on God and because we do not serve God with all of our heart and all of our soul and all our might, and now we are reaping that. Right. We're reaping that. And today we need to ask God to forgive us and God to help us get back to him and serve him and do what he wants us to do. Then he, he also talked about Jason, and I don't have anything uh, uh, to say too much uh, about Jason, but he also had uh, Sosius Pat, Patter, Patter, Sosius Patter, whatever way that is. Oh, so so there. That's the best way for me to say it. Oh, so and so, and uh, oh. but uh, but uh, he he helped them. And he said he was his kinsman. He was kin to him. And all. I've had some so-and-so's as kinsmen too, but I didn't want to talk about them. Some of y'all missed that one. And some of you got it. And you just said, I ain't going to laugh at that one. That'll get worse if I do. So. But, uh, but he said, he's my kinsman. He said, they salute you. They salute you people at Rome. They want you to know, hey, look, we respect you. We honor you. And then he says, and, and then this is the guy who physically wrote the book of Romans in uh, Curtis, who wrote this epistle, I salute you in the Lord too. He, so he said, I'm saluting you also there at Rome. And so, so we have here where they uh, acknowledge that. And then he says, talks about Gaius, mine host, probably the person where he lived. He lived in their house and he, he was the host to them at his house. And today, you know, it, it's always good when you go to somebody's house and they're glad to see you and you treat them like a host. Yeah. Everything. I just slammed the door in their hand, face. I said, I don't want you. Uh, no. But, but no, host, host, you know, day I, uh, it, it, hospitality is a, is a word derived from host hospitality. And, and so, so we have here, he said, he said, I, I, I want you to know that he, is my host and of the whole church and they salute you. He said, he said there, he's my host and he's a host of the whole church and he salutes you. They, they gave uh, that he saluted you. Erastus, the Chamberlain of the city saluted you. Now I don't know what the Chamberlain did, but he was an important job evidently. Huh? Here's the trip. Yeah, you have to watch those treasures. Amen. Something just something about the word when they come on the treasure, you just kind of have to watch them. They get they, you know, you have to, yeah, yeah, have to watch them. And uh, oh, as a chamberlain of the city, so if he was the treasurer of the city, I wish I'd have known him. I'd have borrowed some money from him. You know, so, but he he says he salutes you, and Quartus a brother. Okay, he's brother, and he said the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ be with you all. Amen. Now that is a good conclusion. We need God's grace. His grace, the Lord, the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ be with you all. Now that's proof that they were Texicans because they said you all. Okay, you all. Now most of us Texans, we just say y'all, y'all. Hey, y'all, hey, y'all come over and see me. Y'all, we cut it down. We don't want to waste our good Texican breath. And our so, so we, 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 we. 
And it may be bad breath, but that's beside the point. We don't want to waste it. But, uh, but grace, the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ be with you all. And today, folks, I don't know about you. I don't want what I deserve. They got this commercial about Social Security now on TV. They said, get what you deserve. Oh, I used to be a quarterback. And I'm trying to think his name. He said, get what you deserve. You know what? If we got what we deserve, we'd be in hell. Amen. And it's only by God's grace uh, that some of you still get a check. Because if it wasn't for his grace, I'll guarantee you what those anti-God, anti-American people would do to you. And you better hold on, baby. And you better get your heart straight with God because you're going to see some changes you're not going to like. And so, so, uh, and if you're not ready for it, you're going to fall to pieces. You're going to fall to pieces. I can't go get my food. I don't have any food stamps. I don't have this. You better get ready. You better get ready. And today, uh, we need to ask God to bless. Now, anybody that needs is one thing. I want to get that straight. A lot of people say, well, you're just anti-helping people. No, I'm not. I try to help a lot of people. But I'm not for people that just want to set up around on their back side, their fat backside, and not work or do anything to produce. Today we need we need to, today to get that and realize that hey, God's the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ. We need His grace. Okay, now I'm trying to clear up what I said. I want you to understand. I want to help anybody that I'm helping, but I don't want to support a drug addict or a drunkard or anything else to be able to continue to do what he's doing. And, and so we need to ask God to bless and take care. Now, now he says here some great things after he talks about the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ. Verse 25. Now to him that is of power to establish you according to my gospel. To him who is able to, to establish you. Now today, folks, stability. That's where the word stability comes from. Establish you. You and I, as God's people, are to be stable in our lives. We ought to have stability. You say, well, Brother Jason, man, you didn't have to live, blah, 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 blah. Hey, I've lived worse. Huh? One time we were, we were so broke. And everything, I lost about 25 pounds in two months. You say, boy, well, I bet you look good. I look good now. <laughs> but I lost weight. I lost that much weight. I wouldn't eat at the house because I didn't want to eat the food up from the kids. You said, Brother Jesse, that didn't happen. If you talk to Miss Vicky, it happened. Yeah. Any of you ever heard her, it, it happened. But God taught us a lot of valuable lessons of how to pray. Yeah. I went from that to probably to one of the highest paid people in the city of Springfield, Missouri. And you say, how did that happen? Because we kept doing what God said to do. Right. Amen. Amen. We kept doing what God said to do. And today, folks, we had people that never, ever would have listened to us to witness to them. But they watched our life. And they watched what we did. I one of them, he said, you, you probably ain't going to make your probation time. I said, I bet you, I'm here to be the best worker you ever had. Because I've been going hungry. I was ready to get to work. And I said, I'm here to be the best worker you ever had. I worked there a year. He came back and he said, do you remember when you went to work here and you told me you wanted to be the best worker I ever had? He said, I won't tell you, you're the best worker I ever had. Now that's not tooting my horn. That's tooting God's horn. Amen. Because I never was that good a worker. But I learned that God's people 
will be respected by lost people if we'll live what we preach. If you don't live what you preach, you're just a hypocrite to them like everybody else is. But when you and I live what we preach and we teach and we live to this book, we're going to bring honor and glory to the name of God. And that's what we ought to do. And he said, I want you to be established or established. I want you to be established. He said, he said, now to him that is of power to establish you according to my gospel. This good news that I preach, he is able to establish you in the gospel as establish you in the salvation that you have, establish you in the life that you live. Now, Dave, I, I want you to, you, you have to bear with me because we live in a day where people like for you to be weak. Yeah. Yeah. People like for you to be weak. Now, today, I'm, I'm pretty easy to get along with. But when you start trying to peddle junk on me, you and I are going to s- separate company pretty quick. Yeah. And uh, I hear, I hear about these, People having all these troubles in their life and everything. Now, I told my I told my kids when they got married. I set them down. And I talked to them. And I said, "Look, you see the relationship your mother and I have, and the reason why we have this good of a relationship is because we've served God and we were faithful to God all of these years." And if you two are going to get married, I expect you to do the same thing. If you're not going to do it, go on down the road. He said, did you talk to him like that? Well, I, I watered it down to the way I talked to him. I'm very blunt with that. If you want to be blessed in your life, you do what God says do. Be established that real life, when you're established in something, you believe it's going to be that uh, right. No matter what, you believe it. You're established in it. Huh? You're established in it. Now, you, of course, you, a lot of people, when you're going through rough times, you can always look at somebody and, and say, well, boy, they've never had it rough as I've had. It, most of the time, those people, if they're living for God, have had it rougher than what you've had. When Brother Basham Asumoth came from India, you know what he you know what he ate most of the time to get through college when he got got here? Peanut butter. Now I like peanut butter, but I don't like it by itself every day. Okay? But he established himself. I am here to learn of the truths of the word of God, and I am here to get this education. And I am going to do what God has permitted me to come to America to do. And you know what happened with him? He translated the King James Bible into his dialect in India. And Brother Bill Patterson, who is a great Bible scholar and a Bible translator, he read his Bible and he said, how much Greek have you had? He said, how much Hebrew do you know? He said, this is the best Bible translation in this dialect that I have ever read. It paid off. God blessed him. God established him. And no matter what happens throughout all eternity, he's in heaven now. No matter what happens throughout eternity, God will still reward him for being established in the faith and in the work of the Lord Jesus Christ. Now, I want you to circle that word, established or e-established. It means the same thing. It's just another way of saying it. He said, to him that is of power to establish you according to my gospel. He's talking about Jesus is able to establish you. 
in the gospel of the Lord Jesus Christ. Don't be mamby pamby about the gospel of the Lord Jesus Christ. It is a power of God unto salvation to the Jew, Jew first and also to the Greek, the gospel. It's the power of God unto salvation. Now, he also says, he said, now to him that is a power to establish you according to my gospel and the preaching of Jesus Christ, preaching what Jesus taught his disciple. The gospel is the death, burial, and resurrection of Jesus Christ, but the preaching and the preaching of proclaiming of Jesus Christ and what he did for us. What he did for us. Jesus did something that no one else was able to do. He became the way, the truth, and the life. And no man comes unto the Father but by Jesus Christ. Amen. Other than that, you're not going. Okay? I preached that funeral a week ago today. I, I, I stirred some of them up. There's all kinds of people there. And I said, now some people think that Baptists think that they're the only ones that are going to heaven. But this Baptist doesn't think that. I said, I know a lot of Baptists that are not going to heaven. Why? Because they've never accepted the Lord Jesus Christ as their personal Savior. And y'all have heard me say this at funerals before. And today, nobody's going to heaven except going through Jesus Christ. I don't care if you're a dried-out Episcopalian. If you hadn't trusted in Jesus Christ, you're not going to heaven. Okay? You're not going. And so today, if you've trusted in something else, other than the Lord Jesus Christ, you're not going. Baptism, sprinkling, whatever you're trusting in to get you to heaven, you're not going. Well, I'll give so much money to the church. I don't care how much money you gave to the church. It, it's not going to get you into heaven. It's not going to get you there. It's not going to get you there. So he tells us here, he says, he said, uh, the preaching of, of Jesus Christ, according to the revelation of the mystery. Now, why? We have a mystery. Anybody ever ever play Clue? Huh? What do you do? You're getting, you're gathering bits of information, and you're trying to figure out something. This gospel we have is a total mystery to lost people. They don't understand it. They can't comprehend it. I've had people, well, I've read the Bible all the way through, and I don't say it, blah, 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 blah. You may have read it through, but you didn't believe it through. And so he tells us here, he says, he said, to establish you according to my gospel and establish you to the preaching of Jesus Christ according to the revelation of the mystery which was kept secret since the world began. This secret, this mystery, everybody was searching for it. Most of them were missing it. Huh? Most of them were missing it. Do you know there's a lot of Jews that they missed it? Huh? There's a lot of Abraham's descendants. They missed it. And they're still missing it today. And today we see today this mystery that salvation is totally and completely through the Lamb of God, which taketh away the sins of the world, and not this little lamb here. And never was salvation brought to anybody, Jew or Gentile, to taking a little lamb like this and killing it and shedding its blood and picking the blood up and sprinkling the blood upon the doorpost and on the mantle. That did not save them. It was the faith in the Lamb of God that saved them, and that's still what saves you today. Right. Amen. You just had the mystery revealed unto you if you will just take the mystery and do something with it. Amen. Okay? Amen. That's what we need is to take the mystery and do something with it. The Lamb of God. Oh, John the Baptist, he knew. He said, Behold the Lamb of God that taketh away the sins of the world. Huh? He knew. He knew. And so today we see today that it tells us, he said, the revelation of the mystery which was kept secret since the world began. But now 
is made manifest by the scriptures of the prophets. Every page, every book, every jot, every tittle, everything points to salvation through the Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. Every bit of this book, deaf people call it the Jesus book. I'll open it up small. I, I want y'all. I want y'all see it's a big thing. Amen. It's a big thing. This book has the answer to all the questions that you need answers to. It has the answer. Today, folks, we need to stop and we need to understand. You say, well, Brother Jesse, what about these amoebas and these little microscopic things out there and blah, 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 and everything else? Who made them? Who made them? And so we have here, he says, he said it's made manifest by the scriptures of the prophets. From Genesis all the way to the book of Revelation. It's all about Jesus Christ. It's all about him. It's all about him. And so he says, it, it's, it was released according to, to the commandment of who? The everlasting God. The everlasting God. What kind of God do we have? Everlasting. Huh? Everlasting. You remember them gods they talked about in the Bible, how they'd fall over and break or, you know, or something else or somebody would break them or tear them down or burn them or whatever they did to those. They, they were all fake gods. Huh? I've never seen anybody able to burn God. He's burned a few of them, but they never have been in. I love it when God burns their tail feathers off. But sorry, few kids need it. So, Brother Jesse, you're just so stinking mean. I just get so stinking tired of stupidity. I do not like stupidity. And we have it running belly button deep to an elephant in this country now. And that's a big elephant too. His belly buttons are way up in the air. He said, it's a commandment of the everlasting God. And he said, made known to all nations for the obedience of faith. Don't tell me what you believe. Your actions override what you believe, what you say you believe. Your actions show what you believe. Amen. Uh, down deep in the deepest parts of your being. That place where you think nobody knows. But God knows. He knows. God knows. And so today, he said, I made known to all nations for the obedience of faith. Obey what you say you believe. Is there anybody here that you don't believe that Jesus is the way, the truth, and the life? And no man entereth unto the Father or goes to the Father but by him? Is there anybody that don't believe that? Be honest. If you don't believe that, let me see your hand. Huh? Okay. Yeah. Uh, there's a lot of things I don't believe. Huh? <laughs> oh, and I don't have time to go into that. <laughs> it's too long of a list. But what'd she say? Jesus is real. Jesus is real. Amen. Out of the mouth, mouth of babes and sucklings, God hath ordained strength. Amen. And today, folks, I, my cousin the other day, she said, she was, they, she called me. And she said, Jesse, I'm listening to you on, on Facebook, said, but I'm not going to be able to listen on it very long, said, I'm bailing away from Facebook. And, uh, <laughs> she, and, all, and so we had to set up something. We're, we're, we are on two 
What are they called? YouTube. You, we're on YouTube and Facebook, but what are they called? What are they? Social media. Social media. You know, I, I, I didn't know what they were called. I've called them several things, but I cannot repeat those things. I called them from the pulpit. You know, so it might be bad. You know, so, but uh, we see tonight now, we, we probably just got cut off of, off of social media, but that's all right. We got that plug in in there already. And all, but he says here, he says, he, we, we need to stop and we need to do what we say we will do. But he, she, my cousin, I was telling you about my cousin, and she said, I don't know who that little boy is, but he sure does like saying amen, doesn't he? I said, yeah, he does. I said, I'm training him right. I want to hope, hope I get him where, where he, where he ties and gives money like he, like, like he's supposed to do and everything. And he's already starting to do that. So he, he already gives money. What, what, how does that happen? Uh, train up a child in the way he should go. And when he was old, he will not depart from it. Now today you train a child by teaching them right and then doing right in front of them and then rewarding them with approval when they do that, which is right. That's, that's how it works. And they, that's, that's the best thing in the world you can do. Now I, that wasn't in my message, but it, it turned out good anyway. Amen. Okay. And so, so I tell you, he said, made known to all nations for the obedience of faith. All of the word of God is here available for all people everywhere to be saved. That's what it's all about is for all people everywhere to be saved. And there's no, it's not a secret of how to be blessed of God. If you will do what God says do. Okay. If you do what God says do, you will be blessed. You say, well, Brother Jesse, you don't know how tough it is. Oh, yeah, I do. But even when it was tough, I was still being blessed. I was still being blessed. I got to witness to a lot of people I wouldn't have got to witness to before. Huh? I got to spread the gospel. I got to, I got, they got, they, they watched my life that I tried to work hard. I was a grown man sacking groceries at the grocery store. That's the only job I could get. Had three kids at home. But God said, you keep doing what I told you to do. Amen. And on Sunday night, I'd take my last dollar that I had. And I'd give it toward buying a bus for our <coughs> church. Last dollar I had. And by faith, I told him, I said, I'm going to give you this dollar. Every Sunday night in our men's prayer meeting, I gave my last dollar to help buy a bus. And today, folks, God bless that. God bless that. Mm -hmm. And that day when, when it came time for me to graduate from college, the guys I worked with that I got to witness to and be a witness to, and I had their respect because I tried to be faithful to what God said to. Mm -hmm. They told me, they said, Jesse, you're making too much money. Said so you can't you can't afford to leave here. I said, when it comes to time to graduate, I graduate in December. I said, when December comes, I said, when this plant shuts down for the two week holidays, I said that'll be the last time y'all will see me as an employee here. And when it came time, I'd already turned in my resignation, and I walked out the door that night. They they carried me in the scooter that the bosses used to ride around the plant. They put me in that scooter and rode me around, let me say bye to all my friends and stuff. And I got to, to the front door. The boss says, I hope you have the very best that there is to have. I'm, I'm, I hope, hope everything goes great for you. But today, folks, that takes you doing your part. That takes you doing your part. And today, folks, God don't have to, uh, people don't have to like you. And they don't have to, they don't, they may not agree with you a lot, but they, when, when you're doing what God wants you to do, you're going to be blessed because they're going to see that God's working in your heart and your life. 
And you're so, and when you don't do what God wants you to do, they're going to say, well, they're just hypocrites, just like everybody else out there. And I want you to think about that one too. Okay. He tells us here, he said, he said, I want this gospel to go made main known to all people everywhere. And then he said to God, only wise be glory through Jesus Christ forever. Amen. What's glory to God the Father? The preaching and teaching and the living of Jesus Christ. That's where it's all at. That's what it's about. Now, Dave, folks, I, I hope that you will take the book of Romans and read read back through it. And I hope it means I hope it'll mean something more to you than what it ever has before. This has been a real blessing to me. I mean, it's been, uh, you know, I've seen things in here that I, I've never seen before. And I, man, I, I get started and you say, brother Jesse, where are your notes on all these messages you preach in here? It's, they're here. They're right here. They're right here. And uh, all they said, you mean, you just open up and you start preaching. That's the only thing I know to do. That's the only thing we can do. It's just to preach what God says. And uh, sometimes I, I may not be completely hominutical correctly and I might not I might not I might not be practicing my apologetics like I should and I may not be treating my genetics the way I should but today I want to preach to you the word of God I want I want you to get the word of God if you can get one thing out of the word of God from from the from the preaching that, that's worth all of my effort to me. If you get one thing out of work. But you serve God. You be faithful to him. And he'll bless you in your life. He will bless you in your life. Father, I thank you, God, for this day. I thank you, God, for these that have come. God, I pray, Father God, today that you will bless them and help them in a mighty and special way. Take care, God, in each and every need here tonight. And I pray that you'll bless them in a mighty and special way. Now, while your heads are bowed and you're praying, you say, Brother Jesse, I want you to pray for me. I want you to pray that God will help me to be what I need to be. Now, I've already got hands going up and other hands are going up and other hands are going up. Pray for me. Yes. Pray for me. Yes. Other hands are going up. My hand is going up. I want y'all to pray for me that I'll be what God wants me to be. And you're here and you say, Brother Jason, pray for me. I need God's help. I need God's help. Yes, other hands are going up. Uh, I need God's help. And I want you to pray for me. I want you to pray for me. Thank you. Father, we pray, God, for all of these that raise their hand. And they need you, Father. And I'm asking you, God, to just... Speak to them and help them in a mighty and special way. Oh, God. You know. God. Serving you. And being faithful to you. Is the most important thing. That we do. Please bless. Please take care. Lead. Guide. And direct. In Christ's name, we do pray and ask. It. Amen. And I'd appreciate you being here. And Brother Don has uh, those CDs back there of Miss Vicky, of all of her specials that she sang, and uh, all. And there's a lot of work went into it, a lot of hours, a lot of sitting and watching and listening. He told me, he said, Brother Jesse, he said, I don't want you to tell everybody something. I said, I was in there, said I was copying all that. I said, I'd have to copy a while, then I'd have to quit. He said, I couldn't stand to sit there and watch her sing and listen to her sing. And all. And he said, I just couldn't take it anymore and I'd, I'd have to quit. And uh, he said, he said one, one night I, I, I couldn't take it anymore and I went, to, I, I went to bed and went to sleep. And said, I cut everything off and got in bed and went to sleep. What time in the morning was it, Brother Don? Five o'clock in the morning. Huh? Five o'clock in the morning. 
he said that player came back on and it was Miss Vicky singing five o'clock in the morning and all. And he, he said, and he said, I, I don't have pause on it or I don't have anything on it. He said it was it just started up singing and everything. And Miss Vicky said she was going to come back and haunt some of you people. <laughs> She threatened me with that all the time. She said, she said, I'll come back and haunt you, bud. And uh, oh, but you know what today? I'm glad today that our loved ones, when they go to heaven, they don't have to worry about what we're all this sorry junk that we're having to live with. That, that's, they're, they're in heaven. They're in heaven. But today, uh uh Brother Don and Miss Gwenda, they thought the ghost had come and uh everybody, you know, and uh, but but they could not, they couldn't, they, he said, I don't know what happened. I don't know. I can't explain it. He said, I don't have pause. I don't have anything on that copy of thing. He said, I he said, all of a sudden it just came on and uh, there it was. And uh, all, and so, so y'all better, if Miss Vicky threatened you with anything, you better watch out. And, uh, <laughs> but uh, you said, brother Jason, how can you have fun with that? Because tonight I know she's having fun. Amen. She's having fun. She's having more fun than she's ever had. Yeah. I can, I can, I can see, I can see all those angels of heaven running around with their wings down between their legs. <laughs> After her telling them how to run things up there, yeah. so, they said the Sarge is loose. Then also, I so watch out. But, but uh, I'm glad tonight that we can laugh about it her being in heaven because she's, she's still just tickled pink to be there. And, and so, so uh, let's just ask God to bless and ask God to take care. But if you'd like to have some of those, they're four CDs. Okay. They're not DVDs, they're CDs. And I told brother Don, I said, I'd like to have CDs of all of those. He said, Oh no. And, uh, and so, but, but I just tell, yes, sir. They cover from 2015 to 2020. Okay, covers five years of Miss Vicky singing, and uh, and she sang for ever since we've been saved, 1968. About six months after we were saved, she started singing, and she had, she sung all of her all of her Christian life. She sung and taught, and she lived it, breathed it. Nagged me to death so that I'd keep going. One time I'd be down. She'd say, oh, come on, get up. It's not that bad. Another time she'd be down. I'd say, come on, get up. Let's go again. And they, you just keep going. 